Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight cards that have gone up in price. We're going to discuss why and what other cards to look at. So Empress Galena is a very good EDH card. I don't remember if she saw any play in Invasion. I'm assuming not just because there's not that many legendary creatures back in the day. But foil copies are 19. I think 19 is actually very low for this type of card. Mainly because it's very good in EDHs and it's old. Like, really old. So, this card has steadily been ticking up from a dollar to four dollars, almost five dollars now. It has a steady growth and I don't see it getting cheaper unless it's reprinted. Kind of a hard card to reprint as well. Depends on the set. Overall, this is the type of card that if you play during Invasion, you have many of this similar card, bulk card. The key here is to not trade away your bulk. That is key number one. Because the value that a store is going to give you or a retailer is going to give you for your bulk, it's so it's pennies on a dollar and all it takes is one card, like one lifeline to go up to $6 and that was your entire bulk collection that you were going to get for $6 that the store is going to pay you. Now this is also a steady increase in price. One of the things I've noticed, although the prices are increasing, the demand is not that much. The supply is very low, but the demand is also not high. So this is not going to be a card you can easily trade away. EDH cards, while retail value is high they don't trade well because you have to find that unique buyer who's interested in that card for their deck not very common especially given the amount of decks that exist now if you were playing something modern and you know death shadow is the number one deck then any card that you have from death shadow will probably be easier to trade away in ed8 it is extremely hard to trade away some of these cards so the best option may just be to buy list them out to a store. You will lose value, but you will be able to re-allot that money into something else. All right, let's talk about this. Core sets have produced fantastic cards, which have gone up a ton in price recently. This card used to be a dollar. A dollar. Like, it was a buck. Now it is $18 and continuing to go up. All the ley lines are interesting speculations because they break one of the core fundamentals of magic. You have to pay mana to do stuff. Now Force of Will is the same, the Pack of Negation is the same. Any new mechanic where you don't pay mana to do something, buy the card. Just go out and buy the card because eventually it will be valuable. It will be expensive. It's not something that um, it's not something that is unpredictable. This type of card is extremely predictable. This card type of price spike is expected, and even to the point of how come I didn't get here faster? This was a guaranteed a twenty dollar card, barring reprints, and that's the only danger here. The only danger is. Should it be reprinted, it's not going to be valuable at all. Now, next card, Fiery Confluence. This is one of the Confluence cards, which have all done very well. At least the blue one has done extremely well. The red one is okay. It's $11 now. You can get in Commander deck. So at one-third the price, or depends on when what when you bought the deck, as well as the, you buy the deck from an online vendor, you can probably get even cheaper. I like that. I like to have a pre-constructed deck where one or two cards make up the majority of the value. Typically, you do not want to see value spread out evenly if you're interested in the MTG finance aspect because then your buy list for each of those are going to be low. So someone is going to pay $6 for this card because it's an $11 card, but someone's not going to pay $0.50 cents for a card that is $1 retail. Not going to happen. I like this card a ton. I like the decks a lot. Commander has always been a relatively strange product when I think about it in terms of who's buying this stuff. 
it's kitchen table players, it's casual players, it's people who once they're done buying it, they're not going to, it's not going to go back into supply. It's going to be difficult to go back into supply. Now, going on to my rant about when you played determines how valuable your cards are. The biggest gap between value of when someone played Magic is Unlimited versus Revised. And it's because of Power 9. And Unlimited Rares, in general, are just very expensive compared to Revised. But Revised was also good because it had the 10 dual lands. Now, besides the dual lands, everything else has gone up in price. I don't know what it is about these older cards, but even Re Revised, even Chronicles. Chronicles, I haven't seen movement in that set forever. But now everything's moving up, like really up, like over $10 up for Concord, Crossroad Concord, that little green card that a few months ago was a $4 card is now a $12 card. Even Brain Geyser, where there are so many better options for this card, but it is a rare from Revised, this is almost a $6 card. Man, that, that's insane. I'm kicking myself for selling and trading these older cards because I have, I used to have dozens of these and I sold it for bulk. Now, I have to try to accumulate more bulk. Anyway, although my significant other is not going to like that strategy, I won't tell her. I have a free car garage, so I put the stuff in the garage and tell her to park outside. Necro Skitter, which is a $2 card now, Anything, so okay, we have, first of all, we have uh, the Blowfly, Infant Station, Devoted Jewelry. These are obvious ones because they have minus one, minus one counters. The not so obvious ones are things that give minus one, minus one counters. And there is a mechanic which does that. That mechanic is now spiking in price. So the first batch of spikes are Devoted Jewelry, the super obvious ones, right? Devoted Druid, Blowfly, Infestation, the other one, just anything with minus one, minus one counters. Now the, the secondary spikes, because of our Devastation having minus one, minus one counter interactions, are for cards that give minus one, minus one counters, and that is very interesting. All right, now we have this card. I know I've talked about it a few different times, and the reason we need to talk about it is because it keeps going up. Ooh, it's a $14 card, $15 foil. In Europe, it's only 5 euros. 5.5 euros. I've always wondered like, if Arbitrage could actually work on a card like this. Let's say it's 5.5 euros, but you can get it for 4. You buy 100 copies of it for, let's say, 500. Shipping, insurance, all that good stuff. You spend 550 euros, and then you sell it to America for over $1,000. I think that could work because your margins are very good. Your margins are incredibly good and most importantly, this is a common. So it's not like this is, will be particularly difficult to buy in bulk because when people open Modern Masters, they will have these just in bulk. Now, are they going to charge bulk for it? No, of course not. But the numbers, that's what's interesting here. A lot of times I'll have I'll read a tweet from someone and like oh I bought a hundred or two hundred copies of this card. If the card is a mythic, I don't see how that's possible. Buying a hundred or two hundred copies of a mythic or a reserve list card is insane. It doesn't happen. I can tell you the logistics don't work out most times. Buying rare is still very difficult, very difficult. But probably your best bet is to go to a GP and buy it from every vendor at the site. Possible, but difficult. But uncommons and commons, I could see that happening. But not for like, the more expensive a card is, the harder it is to buy out. Next, we have Grand Architect. This card has spiked a decent amount, and it's always been a good card. I've always enjoyed it. It's $6.50 right now from the low, low price of it looks like under a dollar. There are still some very good gems, but the gems don't tend to be $100 cards that become 110 The gems are like this, where it's a dollar card and then suddenly it's $6. A 
A lot of you are concerned about buyouts. Yes, buyouts happen, but there are some cards that are naturally underpriced. There just is. And if you can identify them and you can begin buying them and eventually a spike. Finally, I took forever to be over $2.50. I bought so many copies of her at two. I think she's at eight now or something. But that is natural growth. And that allows you to buy many copies. That's the only way you can buy 100 or 200 copies of a card is if you have a year or more without the card spiking and you're buying an incremental amount so as to not spike your own buy. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.